tours who normally make 50 to 75 visits to the tower each week or each day. I didn't catch the frequency he was talking about there. But uh, surprisingly, not one casualty from that company out of the 343. Maybe it's time to get a hold of Eric Lawyer of uh, Firefighters for 9-11 Truth and see if we can ask him about that. Um, in the meantime, oh, we have a phone call. Well, that was quick. Okay, let's hear what the callers say. We have about 15 minutes for calls. 13 minutes. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I do. Hey, my name is Rob Johnson, and I've been watching this show since it came on, and you guys are on point, man. And I all, you know, the American public, we already knew this stuff. I'm from L.A. I was born and raised in L.A., and I've been... Criminal, I got two criminal justice degrees, and I've studied political science. I've studied the government extensively. And everybody knows that George Bush and them had that plan. The way those buildings fell was an implosion. Those planes would not have been able to crumble those buildings like that. And now, once, you, once you see it, you can't ever look at it any way other. You know, you don't go back. Pe people don't believe in the 9-11 truth movement and then suddenly change back to the official story. It just doesn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. And this Alex Jones guy, this guy is God sent, man, because here it goes. For an American Caucasian man to be honest and tell you about the inside secrets of our government and how they get down and how they're screwing uh, everybody, man, not just black, white, man, they're screwing everybody. And it, it's about power and money now. And honestly, it's, 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 it's getting to a point where you're right. They are going to start putting bugs in your uh, washing machines and in your uh, cables and all your uh, yeah. appliances and all these things, you know. And it's, it's already it's, happening. It's already, I, I totally agree. I see it. I see it, man. And this show is awesome. And I wish more people would educate themselves into the truth. You know, George Bush, did it strike anybody as odd that George Bush is in the oil business? <laughs> it's kind of an accident, huh? Another one of those and, convenient accidents, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and we go to Iraq. Okay, here's my thing. Here's my thing. And I'm, I know I can go on forever, so I'm going to be courteous to you guys. But let me just say one point. I got a million points I can make, but I'm going to be courteous to the program. We don't have any other calls awesome, yet. Keep going. And I hope you guys flourish. I would like to donate to y'all. Y'all <laughs> are awesome. But I'm going to say one thing, and I'm done. Okay. Um, does it strike anybody? See, people don't know this. George, B George Bush and the Bin Laden family were actually business partners back in the day. Okay? Something faulty went down with them. And even if we do believe George Bush that... Uh, these Afghanistans and all these people crashed our buildings and did all this and it's all Osama bin Laden's fault. Why did we go to war with Iraq then? The, the, exactly. And you know what gets me is when we find out later that we went on a lie, how come we didn't pull out right then and say, oh, sorry, we got it wrong? You know, but no, we just keep going and now every time they justify it, further military extension... You know, we've got to stay there because there would be chaos. Well, why the hell do you think there's chaos there now? Because we're there. Exactly, man. <laughs> we're over we're over at these countries, man. What the American public does not know, and from what I've been watching, what the American public is so naively does not want to know, is that unbeknownst to us and underneath our noses, we're over at these other countries doing things, man, that the American public doesn't even know about. So to the American public, 9-11 was a shock, but just like Dick Gregory pointed out and Alex Jones then pointed out, man, people knew about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're, you just lost your audio there. Are you back? Still my there? nephew's trying to call me, but he's why I have him watching the show, too. I got my family watching your show. Man. All right. Awesome. Well, all I can say is, uh, you know, I don't know how bad it has to get before people really, really wake up. I mean, I can see them going down in a sinking all the way and saying, oh, it's just something I did wrong with my economy. I don't know what, it, but it couldn't be a conspiracy. You know, oh, man. Well, well, you know what? There's people, honestly, <laughs> I do believe in, the, in some conspiracy theories. There's people that try to shoot me down from that. But this is what the American public has to understand. And anybody that's listening to us or watching this on TV, you have to realize that the government is not a building, okay? The government is comprised of human beings just like you and I. The only difference is these human beings have a better job with more money, more <laughs> power at stake. 
So when me and you get mad at the milkman, so to speak, or me and you get mad at the grocery store clerk, hey, we really, you know, we, we can't go blow their country up and take their oil for it. You see <laughs> what I'm saying? To where George Bush, if George Bush and his faction, I'm going to say faction, yeah. And when they get mad at somebody or something, you know, uh, Saddam's sitting on billions of dollars of oil, uh, hey, look, we're gonna, I got the power to come over there and jack you up and take it. And I will tell the American public, whatever, I'll stage whatever, it's and a- this is how it's going to go down. Now, honestly, I think George Bush should be tried if for no reason at all than the fact that he lied to us, man. Yeah, there's everybody in that whole government needs to be tried. It's obvious that they all knew about 9-11 ahead of time. This was a big political, man, this was bigger than, this is probably the biggest heist that's been pulled off since God made the earth, man. Uh, yep. There's been kings and queens and guys like Hitler that wish they had this kind of power, okay? They fought for it and died for it and never accomplished it. Well, you got to realize, go on record. Obama's I, working for the British, Obama's working for the British. Oh, you know what? I hate to say this, man, and I, I'm going to say it because we're all being honest. And, and I don't care what, and, I, and I'm a black African male, and I don't care what they think about me, man, but here's the truth, and they, need to, and they need to educate themselves, man. But Obama works for the Illuminati, okay? Yeah. And the Illuminati is a group that if you look into, you'll find out they run the world. Hey, well, I don't think that anybody needs to identify because of skin color. I mean, so many of the world's criminals were white. I don't have any reason to identify with them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that for my black America that might look at me like, oh, why would right. you say that, man? Because they don't know what I know. Well, I can and really... the reality uh, is the Illuminati is running your whole world, man. Well, I mean, my family fought for civil rights and, and all that sort of stuff as, we, as I grew up. And I can really testify to the, the thrill it was to finally have a black man get elected after this struggle, epic struggle all our lives. And then it turns out that they were playing us. Oh. Well, I'm going to tell you like this, bro. I'm going to tell you like this, bro, and this is some real deal, okay? Here's some historical facts. Like I said, I'm a very educated man. I got two college degrees from a nice institution here in Portland, Oregon. But the reality of it is, is this, man. Obama, uh, uh, Barack Obama does not share black America's experience. His family did not go through slavery. His family did not go through the civil rights movement. His family does not have any connection to African American ties whatsoever. His wife does, but he does not. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to make this a racial thing because it's not. This is a people thing. And I have white, I love God, so I love white people, Mexican, I love everybody. And that's not what this is about. What this is about is this new world order. There's a new world order. And I want everybody to take their dollar Everybody get a dollar bill, take it out your pocket, and look at it. It yeah. says Novo Ordo Securum. That is Latin for New World Order, and yep. that's where yes, they're pushing is. towards. Okay, well, thanks, caller. I'm glad you called. And hey, man, God again. bless you guys. I think you're awesome. Yes, Keep it thanks. up, man. I hope this show continues, baby. Thank you. And I normally don't let calls go that long, but he was right on the whole time. Of course, patting me on the back is okay, too. I mean, you know, well, anyway, I'm, I'm not that narcissistic. Go ahead, and there's one more caller. Been waiting patiently, I hope. We must restore chaos and disorder. <laughs> a couple, about a week or two ago on Coast to Coast, and I take some of the information I hear, most of the information I hear on there a little bit with a uh, bit of caution. But there was Anywhere. a guy on there, I can't think of what his name was, but he said the reason why we went into Iraq, and this sounds almost plausible, was that the sanctions were going to be up on Iraq. They were going to be, uh, you know, get out of their uh, probationary period, so to speak. And they were already had a deal set up with China for China to come in there and get the oil. Right, and we couldn't have that. Uh, that's, I, was, I think that's exactly right. And so that's why we went into Iraq uh, looking for the imaginary uh, weapons of mass destruction. So. Well, that was just a cover story, you know. And, I, and eventually the soldiers became aware of that, and, uh, you know, they tried to cycle them around so they don't get too much exposure to the corruption and but they're coming back and now the soldiers are you know almost unanimously putting their money towards Ron Paul over all the other candidates yeah the uh, how big is that um, embassy that we have over there in Baghdad yeah well it's bigger than the Vatican so it's like how many square miles I, I forget but it's huge it's and they have one, I, how many I, thousand I can't people you, are going to be uh, staying there? Somebody Google that back there. Google that and find out, and I'll see if I can get it on air before we get off. It just seems like a ridiculous amount of money, it's, and and now we're we're still spending two billion dollars a week in Afghanistan, you know. And it's just uh, well, what yeah, we need it, to do is uh, 
if it, people can. I just happen to think of it now, but we can get some of this power back to uh, the individual. But what gets me is that this stuff is covered in the news because I have no particular insight. Yeah. I, I, you know, but I get the information eventually. So, what's well, wrong with the, the American public? Out of business by growing our own uh, industrial hemp. We, if we quit growing pro-inflammatory foods like wheat, barley, rye, oats, and corn, and soy and dairy products and start growing industrial hemp on that same land we could have tons of diesel uh, biodiesel fuel that doesn't put out yeah well that's the problem it puts the others out of business and that's why they you know politically won't let it happen well you probably uh, you do the uh, you probably see the show uh, cannabis common sense oh yeah i've I've contributed a lot of money to that in the past for the uh medicinal marijuana legalization yeah well this is Back also when I had a good job. industrial <laughs> hemp and uh, right now if you go into a health food store and you get some hemp seed uh, food products all of that comes from canada and there's two farmers that uh, live on the border uh, they live in north dakota and their farm is right across the border from canada hey well this is more of a subject for cannabis common sense but we got another call hey, waiting in only we three can minutes take some of the power back from those stinking oil companies those rotten pukes that are you know, <laughs> yeah. screwing us uh, royally so uh, if people get off their ass out there and sign that petition at hemp.org or octa2012.org right on I, I agree about signing the legalized marijuana petition well not just marijuana but the industrial hemp at the same time well yeah and allow our police officers to go after dangerous psychos next like caller the, uh, or we don't get to the next caller the meth addicts okay take care man thanks, thanks. bye <laughs> Sorry to cut you off like that, but we, we had one more call waiting. Yeah, hi. Hi. You got a couple minutes. Go for it. Okay. Well, I wanted to talk about the chemtrails that are in our skies constantly. Yep. About Every the only thing I can tell you about that is that I was way skeptical about anybody spraying stuff that might hurt themselves. and But then I listened to Alex Jones, and he started reading off patent numbers and said, if you don't believe me, go look up these patents. So I did, and I found out there were hundreds of patents that that, that showed how to mix chemicals to be sprayed in with the jet fuel and how they'd survive being combusted. And, you know, but primarily it was metal, metallic stuff that gets sprayed out to uh, change weather. Do you have any more to add to it than that? Oh, okay, because I was thinking that I had read a little bit about, uh, you know, jam crops and that they were trying to do something to convert the soil. <laughs> That's not my has... expertise, but, boy, GM crops should be totally banned. I mean, when you can have a, a guy get prosecuted because pollen from a neighboring GM crop blew over to your standard food and you get p- penalized for that? Oh, man. I know. I know. And I believe 9-11 ties into everything. You guys should go to David Wilcox, DivineCosmos.com and check out we'll, we'll um, check Financial it out. Tyranny. It's I got, got everything. I just got the information about that last caller uh, was talking about the embassy. It's 104 acres in the compound. It costs $700 million. That's, that's the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. <laughs> anyway, folks, I got a call, uh, another show coming up april 14th that's the next one and uh i guess watch it again then we'll see if (laughs) we'll see what state the country's in by then yeah and thanks caller uh we still have about 30 seconds if you'd like to say one thing before we go off um well i just want to say that uh stop buying fluoridated toothpaste people and um stop buying genetically modified foods yeah, if they if they label them so you could tell when you were. <laughs> I, well, I know. Finally, Trader Joe's. There is one brand of Tom's that doesn't have fluoride. In okay, it, so. well that's good. <laughs> Thanks for calling, and we're off the air here now, and or in about ten seconds. And Thank uh, you. the next show, April fourteenth. Be sure to check me out on the YouTube channel Two Five One Omega. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>